Now, one of the stories which certainly hasn't got out is uh, that Ismail Haniya, who is one of the senior heads of Hamas, though currently living in Qatar, has urged uh, political negotiations now. He said in a televised statement today that he is willing to engage in political negotiations. We are ready for political negotiations for a, uh, for a two-state solution uh, with Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. I can't imagine that that's necessarily going to fit in very well with uh, Netanyahu's um, aims or Likud's aims, but it is nevertheless a starting point. And uh, it's at odds. It's at odds, certainly, with the views of Ghazi Hamad, um, who is also a member of the Hamas Politburo, uh, who said that the terror group that Hamas intends to perpetuate further massacres like the October the 7th massacre, if given the chance, until Israel is destroyed. Now, um, Haniya's call for a ceasefire, which is another part of his speech today, uh, is probably not going to happen. But his, his, his offer of political talks, I think, is a, is, is a very serious positive, and it shows a fracturing of the Hamas leadership. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, Netanyahu has already dismissed the idea of... Um, a ceasefire, he says, just as the United States would not agree to a ceasefire after the bombing of Pearl Harbor or after the terrorist attack of 9-11, Israel will not agree to a cessation of hostilities with Hamas. Um, and I think, you know, that, that has to be taken at face value. So calls for a ceasefire are really virtue signaling um, or wasted breath. We have to call for something far more specific a humanitarian pause, uh, an evacuation of refugees, an opening of the uh, various um, gates out of Gaza and setting up refugee camps in Israel, in Egypt. Those are the sort of things that really we could sensibly call for. But, but, but also the opening of political discussions with even a part of the Hamas leadership is a major plus. And I'm, I'm slightly surprised. I'm slightly surprised that, um, uh, that this hasn't been reported so far. Um, Israel has allowed 170 trucks carrying food and medicine to enter the Strip. Um, but there is, no, there is no fuel going in because Israel says that, the, that Hamas would use the fuel to operate its weapons systems and, uh, and, and, and to, power, to power up the, um, the electricity and the gas and stuff needed to, to keep the tunnels and bunkers and the ventilation in the tunnels and bunkers functioning. Uh, the IDF has said that Hamas actually has a huge amount of fuel reser reserves um, and this was actually confirmed last week anyway. The terror group has been stockpiling both food and oil and keeping these from the Gazan residents who are in desperate need. So, again, demonstrating that this organization, Hamas, is hardly uh, looking after the people that it represents. Um, Hamas has... A, a, a Lebanese official has said that Hamas has enough supplies to sustain fighting for three or four months without a need to resupply, but that this is at the expense of the civilians in the Gaza Strip.